Hello and welcome to another uh, tutorial. This one is going to be on Yoast SEO and how to use it effectively within each blog post or page. And as you can see, I've just started out writing the article and I'm going to uh, pause and then continue and show you everything as I go. Um, so let's assume you've got all the basic settings right for, for SEO. So you're basically under your um, under your settings, um, you've 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 got uh, your um, location set to your time zone. Okay, make sure you get your location set to your time zone, um, and make sure. And we'll go through this a little bit later. But you've got um, you've got your XML sitemaps configured, and you've got them registered on Google Search Console. You've got your social, all your social media links in there. Your titles are meta set, and then Search Console integrated, and also AMP. Now you'll only see AMP once you've once you've added the Yoast SEO add-on called Glue for Yoast, and I'll I'll go through all this uh, a little bit later. Um, but I'm just going to show you how I'm setting it out. So basically, I've set it out with um, the title. Now I've thought about the title. Um, the, the most important thing that people are going to find is probably doing a search for Yoast SEO. It's a popular plugin so there's going to be quite a few other people uh, with the same um, with, with the same title and so I'm going to be up against it to actually get this post to be fairly popular. But that being said, it's this post is not that's not the reason why uh, I'm doing this. This is mainly, most of the posts that I do are actually, they're for the greater audience, but they're mainly for my, my clients and so that I can keep pushing them to be better and better at doing what they do best and, uh, and that's writing the content and then letting the SEO take care of it from there. So as you see, I'm only a little bit way through, and you'll probably see if I put in the type this Yoast SEO, which I've used before. So I'm just going to use the word Yoast as the key phrase. Now you'll see that automatically it's told me I've only got 120 words written. I need 300, so it's given me a red flag, and I'm never going to get that up here to green if I if I have red flags. Orange flags, you can get that to green, and that's basically saying it's okay. It's not saying it's amazing, but it's saying it's okay. Um, no meta description. So here I haven't still haven't set the meta description. So that's what's going to appear in Google search, the SEO title and the meta description, and that's the link to it, okay? Now... Now, I've already, it's already said that I'm linking to another page with the focus keyword. So I've chosen the focus keyword as Yoast. And I'm also linking to Yoast SEO. So I want to break that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to break that. I'm going to um, make that the link. So therefore I don't get that negative. So I put that in there, then I go there. And then the important thing, if I'm linking to a site outside of my own site, I open, I click to open that in a new tab. Okay. All right. So now I'll probably get that. And the, it's saying the page title is too long. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to fix that anyway, so I can just put that in because Yoast SEO automatically adds my site name in there. So then that'll get rid of that, and so now I've only got the three. So I'm going to continue writing um, to get this right, but just to begin with, um, just showing you. And then now I look at the readability, and if I click on any of these eye, eye icons. Um, you'll see that I've just got too much going on at the moment. So it tries to say that the, the, most of your sentences should be fairly short, okay? And at the moment it's saying that my sentences are too long. But I'll continue writing this blog and then I'll get, fix up all the little things that I've got to take care of 
especially with this, this theme framework and the category and all this sort of stuff, the tags and the featured image. But I'm going to continue writing it and then I'm going to get back to you again. Okay, I'm back. So, so now what you see is I've started to build out the content a lot more uh, and flesh it out as far as what, what I think is required in the, in the, um, in the article. Okay, so I'm probably about 50% through. Okay, it's probably taken me about 10, 15 minutes uh, to, to get to the rest of the way. But I'm basically, here I'm talking about setting up your Yoast. So under your general settings in WordPress, you can actually set the time zone, if, you know, and the closest city to you, or you can put the GMT time uh, in there, minus 5.0, whatever, uh, but you can look it up also on search, you know, just type in your um, your city, the closest city, and the time zone will tell you what it is. Make sure you set that up. Google Analytics, obviously, I mean, it, hopefully you've set that up and you can set up Google Analytics by following that link and logging in with your Google account and then setting up your site, adding your code. Usually each theme that you have uh, all has has the code. Um, in this, sorry, I'm just turning off my Skype. Um, uh, codes, code set in there and then Google search console is is basically uh, what you want to do I've got all a lot of my sites in here is you want to make sure you add your site and follow through on all the prompts there for the Google search console um, now once you've once you've set up uh, and you go through the setup process you can also go through uh, the automatic configuration from Yoast and that steps you each way through it And then you'll get your XML and you'll put that into the Google Search Console. And once you've done that, you'll also be able to integrate it into your site as well. Uh, make sure Facebook Open Graph is, is selected and make sure you've selected an image so that if it doesn't find an image, Facebook will grab that in your, your default image uh, for an article. Okay, but I'll show you how you can do that a little bit later through actually through here. That's the social. Uh, and the Twitter card setup. Okay, so let's go through a few of these from Yoast. Okay, here are your general settings. Company info. I don't have these because I've already got them integrated. I don't need to do that. Um, and you know, I've just I basically the all the basic settings of Yoast is all I need. Okay, and then we can go through the titles and meta. Now, uh, Yoast talks about, um, takes you through all these sort of things, but you might have a bunch of post types that you don't want, which I've got, I don't want them uh, indexing my pop-ups and my products. Uh, portfolio and photo albums is fine, team, I don't want them indexing. So you can set which which types of posts you want indexed. And then the, the obviously through here as well, the um, taxonomy. So if you archive pages and categories and stuff like that, oh, sorry, the archive pages are here, and what to, what to index and what not to index, okay? And then we go through the social. You put all your social media accounts. I don't know why they still have MySpace in there, but anyway, um, I'm sure something else is more popular than MySpace, but there you've got all your, all your um, social media accounts. Make sure you open graph and you've got your default image you can also, if you want to create a Facebook app for your site, you can do that. Not a bad idea to do. And there's the XML sitemap. And it will generate the XML sitemap. And that's from all the things that I've selected. It only includes those things. And it tells you when the last thing was, the site, last sitemap was updated for each of the sections. And this is the Google Search Console. So it tells you about um, all the different uh, features for each of the uh, different sites uh, for, for five iPhones and smartphones and stuff like that. Okay, it tells you when you get an error. And you, if, you've, if you've had a site around a long time, you, you're going to get some errors. Okay, uh, but that's not a big deal. And see, so you, you'll you'll authenticate this with Google once you've got your Google your your sitemap set up in Google Search Console, you can authenticate it, okay? So let's go back to the article. 
So what I've done now is I've just fleshed it out a little bit more with the content and text, and you'll see I've still got quite a few um, errors, which I've used the keyword Yoast a little bit too much. I'll, I'll figure that out as I go. Um, my readability is pretty good at the moment. Uh, readability for really long articles, you're going to find it very tough to get a green light. Uh, for for medium-sized, small to medium-sized articles, 300 words to 500 words, you, you should be able to get that right. And it explains each each of the uh, each of the ones in there. It'll actually it'll actually highlight when you click on that after it's analysed it. It'll actually highlight the sections. Okay. Some of these won't be highlighted because I've got green all the way. But that will actually show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off this article now. I'm going to write another section here um, on, on, uh, on, on Yoast and how to get it right. And then I'm going to put a featured image and, and then clean up all the other sections on the site. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. So now I've pretty much finished the article. I've got to review it before I publish it live. And I've got to put a featured image with it. So let's go through what I've done now. Okay, we've, we've covered this area. Now we're just going to get things right for great SEO. Well, I probably should put good SEO, but I'll put great there anyway. Now terms. Think about what sort of terms you're going to use throughout your article and really get to the, the heart of it as far as what your audience is. Now, my audience are functional medicine with, uh, practitioners, by and large. I've got other clients as well, but that's the one that the, the audience that I want to attract. I've done around about, you know, uh, around 100 websites for functional medicine practitioners. And so I put things in like my target audience is functional medicine practitioners website design and development in the United States. And I link to somewhere on my site where people can look at a sample folio. Functional medicine practitioners also go under the term of integrated medicine. Okay, so I've added that as well. And those are the sort of things you've got to think of. Now, if you're a, um, a doctor in a certain area, you might talk about a condition and then the treatment for that condition and then talk about somebody, not a you don't put their, their name or anything like that, but where they're from, what suburb they're from uh, in your area. All that gets captured by search engines. Okay. Now, tagging. So you'll see that I've tagged this image. Only a few tags. You don't need to put 10 or 20. And the most important thing is your tagging has to be, any of these terms here have to be in here or in your title. If you, if you put extra terms in because you think you're being smart, oh, well, they'll, they'll pick that up as well. The search engines are smarter than you, okay? They're smarter than what you, whatever you think you can get away with. If, you, if I put in there a legal practitioner, web, legal lawyer websites, legal websites, and all the stuff that I might want to get or whatever, and none of the content is in, the, in this area or in the title, then that's going to negatively impact my SEO score, okay? Because it, it knows that I'm trying to do something that I shouldn't be doing, okay? Then adding a featured image, okay? Up here on every single blog, doesn't matter what theme or theme framework you're using, you'll have the featured image. Now, I'm going to show you what I do for featured image in the next, in the next section. Um, we'll just have a bit of a break for a second. Um, but I'm going to go through the featured image uh, thing in the next one. I'm just going to go and search for an image on one of these websites that I want to use with it, and I'm going to show you how I do it all. Okay, so now for the featured image. Okay, I'm going to click there, featured image. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm, I've done a search on pexels.com for a computer. Now, I've used a few of these already. Now, the images that I select is I don't want it to look, I don't want an image like this. This is just too much like stock art. I don't like it. It's crap. Okay. Don't, I, I like natural type images. Okay. So I'm looking for a natural one. I like this one. It's not too bad. 
This is probably more relevant. He looks like he's writing an article in WordPress. <laughs> uh, let's have a look, is he? No, Yahoo. He's doing something in Yahoo. But um, I'm going to use this one. So what I'm going to do, you get a free download. I'm just going to go for, for this size, and then I'm going to download it. Okay. So here it is here. Now what I'm going to do is I use a, a program called Canvas. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that image to there. What I'm going to do is go back to my article. And I'm just going to take this part. I'm going to go in here. Copy that. I'm going to change that because my last article, or my next article go up is I've got the yellow one. So I'm going to probably go with the blue And then that image, I'm going to drop into the background there. See which one works the best. I think that one looks the best, don't you? Then I'm going to click download. JPEG is going to be fine for this. I'm going to wait for that to download. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this title. Okay. It'll download in a minute. Okay, that's downloaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the image to that. So I've got the title perfect. Then I go to Featured Image, drop the file, And I'm going to put in a little bit of a keyword there in the description. Okay. I probably should have that as a capital. So this has taken me, to do the featured image correctly, a few minutes. Uh, obviously, you've got to select the right thing, the right the image you're going to use and, and use that consistently in Canva if you want to do that. And it's not hard. And I'm going to do a little separate thing on Canva later. But now I've got that image. Now, I've got it all right now. Look at this. Okay, so this subheading here, I'm going to change this, and I think I might, I'm going to put a new title in there. Okay, and that might help me here, yep. Because what I had was too much. Now, another bit of software I use, cost me about $100 a year, is called Grammarly. And that basically goes through if I'm using the word too much. Tells me where I should put commas. It, it always does this initially with uh, with uh, after when it says and. So you just got. I don't know why it does that. And it's telling me that I've used the word too many times. I can ignore that one. Passive voice is a bit of a pain, but. I'm going to keep the image. I'm going to ignore that because I do. Now I've got a spelling mistake there, and it corrects my spelling mistake. And then I just click outside of that, and it fixes up everything. Okay. What's it telling me about otherwise? Otherwise, okay. I'll fix that up too. 
So now I've got everything right. Now I'm going to do a cleanup. It's a standard post. Okay. Even though it is about functional medicine, a little bit about, but it's not actually about that. It's about SEO. Okay. So I just put it under the WordPress. I hide on the mobile. I hide this, this theme framework allows me to hide the footer on mobile and the sidebar on mobile devices. It put a little bit of a space at the bottom of the site. Now I'll go back. So if anyone clicks on the back button in the browser, it'll go back to the blog. Okay. And now I've got to put the excerpt in. So I'm going to take this. Now I try to keep all my excerpts exactly around the same size. So it should be just past here. That's enough. I've got to bring that back to there. That's about where, where I have about the length of most of my excerpts. Okay. And that, what that does is it, it, it allows for a nice balance on all the articles. So instead of having a long excerpt down to here, it, it's nice and balanced. Okay, so now I'm going to go through review all the things. And I'm also going to not publish this immediately because I've got another post going up today. So I'm going to put that up on the 27th. So it's going to be scheduled on the 27th. I'll include all the links to the to to uh, not to to my well, I'll put one link to my site, but to all the all the uh, free sites there, so you can get access to it uh, in the article. And again, with with uh, with the images, you can do search for anything like uh, phone, and you'll see that I've used a few of these. I like this site the most; it's updated quite a bit. Um, but don't upload a, a massive, massive image. And always make sure you rename the image. Okay? And always, see again, that's a little bit too stock arty for me. I like that image. A little bit, but I've used that before, that one. That's a nice one. These sort of things you can post on Instagram or something, but I like that one as well. That's a good one. Stick to natural images. Now, the images don't have to be 100% relevant to the article. It's not that important. I really like that one. Um, what's important is, is that it looks good and it doesn't. It, it's not like drawing too much attention away from the actual article. Now I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about embedding articles in here. I use a thing called Visual Composer and I can actually lay it out pretty crazy how I want it, uh, but I'm not going to do that. And the last thing with this with this framework, I, I can actually, I'm going to change it to the post type to a video once I've uploaded the video um, and I'm going to put the video URL in here and then select video format. So then when you go to the post, it actually plays the video, not the image, but it all, it still, it still has the image here. Okay, so there you go. That's, uh, I know it's a little bit long-winded, but I thought I'd cover as much as I possibly could as far as not only writing a good post um, and having the right content in there, but also setting it all up correctly. Oh, so the final thing, sorry, uh, is, the, is Facebook. Now, I've automatically got it set, so I don't actually need to do this, but I could, if I wanted to, um, I could just say this, Okay, this and so I can actually customize it if I wanted to as far as Facebook goes. And then Twitter, I can do the same thing. Okay, uh, probably with Twitter, I would be doing a, a little bit shorter. Maybe that's a little bit long. And I can, again, use that image. So basically there I've got everything set up. Now, if you don't want anyone to view your article, you can also put a nofollow link. Okay? You can also put a canonical URL um, in there, which redirects to your thing, so you can actually track it if you want. 
but there, I've got pretty much everything as I want it. Okay? Now, if, if you've got an article and you've got a, a, a website that has, um, has, has this built in, you can actually hide the featured image on the post. So if the, if, if the featured image is taking up too much room in the post and you don't want to display it on the actual full post page, you can also, with, depending on your theme options or your framework options, you can also disable that. So there you go. Uh, and I'm going to schedule the post. So I'm going to read over this again before I, I publish it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in uh, the comments section below and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as possible.